What's up, polyphonic.org? Nick Pins are back for another edition of the vlog. Today we're joined by a really good friend of mine uh, since 10th grade in high school. Uh, I've known Mr. Chris Ziemba, a fellow Eastman graduate, and uh, he came by graciously today to talk a little bit about his experiences in New York and just kind of what his life has been like after Eastman. So when you're at Eastman, what, uh, which degree programs were you involved with? Well, I started there in 2008, and I did uh, my Bachelor's of Music. Um, it was a double major, and it was nine semesters long, four and a half years, and it was um, jazz and contemporary media, basically jazz performance, and music education. And then um, I guess I had a semester off after that, and then I started my Master's in Jazz and Contemporary Media in 2009. So when did you finish? Uh, 2011. 2011. And so since Eastman, now it's three years, 2014. So what in the last three years, what have you been up to? Well, uh, immediately after uh, finishing at Eastman, I moved to New York um, to start uh, the Artist Diploma Program at Juilliard. It's kind of like a post-master's, basically professional training program, you could call it like that. And that was two years. Um, and that pretty much ate up my entire life for those two years. There's a lot of great experiences with the classes, but it involved a lot of touring, a lot of teaching, uh, a lot of performing, and it was all, you know, it was still school. Uh, but the year since graduating there, I've been pursuing, you know, developing my career as a performer and educator and uh, basically freelancer. Mm. What kind of gigs have you been doing since you, you finished there? Or since, uh, since you finished at Juilliard? I've been involved in a wide variety of performing experiences. Um, uh, I've done a lot of club gigs. I'm involved with several regularly working bands, semi-regularly working bands uh, that play at various middle tier club venues throughout the city um, on the jazz spectrum of things. I do a lot of uh, accompanying work as a pianist. It's to me, I think it's you know fast and, and easy money, and plus there's a lot of different uh, musical musics you're exposed to when you're accompanying. So I, I do like elementary school, public school accompanying, and I'm also on accompanying rosters for uh, you know single vocalists and stuff like that. Um, as far as teaching goes, I have some private students, and I also have a small adjunct gig at uh, York College, which is one of the city university schools out in Queens which I'm there a couple days a week. And uh, in between all that, I try to get as many experiences as I, as I can. So whether or not it's jazz or classical or something in between, you know. So it sounds like you're doing just all kinds of different stuff all the time. And I think that for a lot of us, that ends up what it is. But mm -hmm. when you're in school, you don't always realize exactly the breadth and width of everything you're going to have to do just to like be able to do the things that you want yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. How do you so how do you find that the time you spent at Eastman has prepared you or has not prepared you for uh, for your life now? Well, I will say that that <clears throat> had I not gone to Eastman, I don't think I would be doing what I would be doing right now. Uh, I'm very grateful for the I guess basically 7 years, 6 and a half I spent there. Um, just because those six and a half years were really the, the formative period in my musical development. Um, and not just jazz performing, but really all across like the entire spectrum of music that I'm involved in right now. So jazz, classical, and education. If I hadn't gone to Eastman and, and uh, participated in the myriad classes and, and like different experiences that they offered me there, I don't think I'd be prepared at all for some of the stuff that I've had to do. Now, like you said, some of the stuff that we have to do, you know, they don't talk about that at school, but there's you know, a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? You can apply a lot of what, well, I can apply a lot of what I've learned to those situations and make the best out of them. So I'm very... Is there anything in particular that you were thinking of in terms of the thing, things that you were unprepared for or prepared for? Like I know for me, uh, for as an example, having to study classical music at Eastman as a jazz major has been completely beneficial as now I not, not really do classical gigs, but in terms of like playing on Broadway and different things like that, 
like the reading thing is for that sure big? yeah and um so you know i grew up uh classically trained before i came to jazz so i was a classical pianist first and then mm -hmm. you know high school i started jazz and that's what i majored in at eastman um and as a you you remember as an undergraduate you're only i think it's probably the same for trombone you only have to, you're only required to take two years of classical lessons right. i think that's what it, maybe it changed yeah. by now but. well I, I the thing i love about eastman is that it gave me the flexibility should i so choose and i did choose to continue classical you know lessons so i did those for all four years all six years rather throughout my masters and and i will agree that having studied classically um it got a lot of skills together such as sight reading mm -hmm. uh, just general reading ability technical stuff that if i'm not playing a jazz gig like i'm all these accompanying gigs i'm sight reading you know 90 percent of the time mm -hmm. um and theater gigs, musical theater gigs, that kind of thing. I mean, that's the classical thing plays in very heavily, whether or not it is strictly classical music. So, right. How do you feel like your perception of what you would be doing is the same or different now that you're here doing it? That's a that's a difficult question to answer because I'm not exactly sure that I had uh, a perception of what I would be doing when mm -hmm. I left. Sure. Um, I guess I had hopes of what I would be doing, and for the most part, those hopes are being realized, which is that I'm uh, making a living performing and teaching, you know, because mm -hmm. those are the two things that I had majored in. Those are the two things that I really passionate about and want to do. Um, but, you know, digging into those, specifically how am I performing, specifically how am I teaching, and in what contexts uh, I didn't have... Um, much of an inclination and I still have goals that I'm shooting for that I haven't quite achieved yet. Mm -hmm. um, for example, with the music education thing, um, most of the teaching I do uh, within York College and out is private teaching. I'm, you know, I have a lot of private students, I'm teaching them jazz piano and, and beginning piano and classical piano and stuff like that. Um, and I would love to eventually expand upon that so I'm teaching you know, classes, if I got a, mm -hmm. uh, a a bigger college gig or became more involved at York, I'd love to do stuff like that. Uh, so is there any any one person or a couple of people that have helped you out a lot, either from Eastman or since moving here, people you've connected with that have really kind of helped you down the path that you want to go down? There's, there's really an endless list of people that I'm very thankful for. Uh, and that is, as an aside, one of the great things about going to school for music mm -hmm. is that you meet all these people that down the road you keep connections with and you never know right. uh, how they're going to help you out. And sure. I mean, that's that's how you start off, I think. I'm very grateful for having done that. But if I had to specifically name a few, um, it would have to be the, uh, the faculty such as Harold Danko in the jazz department at Eastman, who I studied with for... The entire time I was there um, and he really exposed me to a lot of things in the jazz spectrum that otherwise mm -hmm. I would I probably wouldn't have checked out on my own and that's a cool thing that you know, I didn't have much of a direction he took me and kind of molded me in one direction mm -hmm. and then when I got to Juilliard uh, Frank Frank Kimbrough was my mentor who took off kind of took over where Harold left off and he took me in other directions and so like the mentor thing has really helped me a lot and in the music ed spectrum back at Eastman, that mentor would have been uh, Dr. Azara, Chris Azara, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Gruno. Nice. And uh, both of those guys, well, all, all four of them have been really instrumental in helping me realize what I want to do and preparing me for all these situations. So. Right, right. Yeah, you never know what the situations mm -hmm. are going to be. And then, of course, there's countless peers and friends that I've <laughs> kept in touch with over the years who have uh, been very kind and continuing to ask me to make music and do various things for them. So, I know because a lot of times we offer advice when, when we do teaching together, it's often uh, with the, at high school or middle school level uh, when we teach uh, master classes and stuff. But if you were going to give some advice to um, some young pianists that are, say, in college now and are thinking about moving to New York, uh, what advice might you have for them uh, in terms of what they should be preparing to do or being prepared to do once they got here. If you're preparing to move to New York, you have to be prepared to really 
accept any challenge that's thrown at you. Take any gig that comes your way. That's something that um, my teachers both gave to me. And through those varied experiences, there's going to be some that you hate and some that you really enjoy. But that's how you figure out um, what you really want to do and what kind of things you're able to do. Because let's face it, when you're in New York, there's so many other musicians. Um, as pian as pianists, there's a lot of work available, but mm -hmm. you know it's, it may not always be the kind of stuff that you want to do. And at the end of the day, you still have to pay your bills and stuff. So, as much diversification as you can handle as a pianist is really going to uh, serve you better. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get here, go out and check out all the different types of music that you possibly can, and uh, you know, expose yourself to different types of musical situations, and just take advantage of the fact that you have this massive musical community around you um, by going and seeing all these different types of music i mean that's the same that's not just a piano thing that's like a really any instrument sure you have to learn from the people that's around you need to know what's on the scene so you can kind of keep up with it and mm -hmm. and try to find a way to fit in yourself as a player and that's kind of a tangential thing to think about but abstract rather than that tangential uh now that you're was this like three years or so removed from your education at Eastman? Did you have any reflections or realizations about some of the things that you did there that were just maybe you think differently of them now than you did at the time? You, maybe you appreciate them more or anything like that? Well, I will say, um, I think I probably mentioned this before, but uh, because I spent so many, so many years at Eastman, uh, I really was able to take almost, I, in my opinion, I think I was able to take full advantage of the things that were offered to me by the various faculty. Um, you know, I started there and then beginning jazz students are given a, a fundamental education. You know, you got to learn the, the basics of, of your craft. And by the time I got to the master's, I'd already kind of done so many credits that I was almost able to shape my own curriculum and I took independent studies with some of the faculty that weren't pianists like I studied mm. with trumpeter Clay Jenkins um, and we did a whole semester on uh, learning to improvise as a horn player which was which is you know something that piano pianists tend to get into their their piano things and like my teacher yeah, told me sure. one time that I was kind of guilty of doing that um, so I wanted to get away from uh, all that kind of stuff. And so that was a course that uh, I designed with Clay. Mm -hmm. And then another course I did involved classical improvisation. That was with the jazz theory professor, Darius Tarafenko. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool because it took the improvisation that I had kind of known from the jazz world and applied it in a much more formal classical setting a la Bach or mm -hmm. Mozart or all sorts of things that was actually really, really difficult for me and so all of these experiences have shaped my musicality in such a way that were I to be presented with these situations again in New York I would be much less hesitant sure. to accept them because mm -hmm. you know when I came to New York I was scared of all these different experiences I, I don't like I don't like change I don't like trying to do new things mm -hmm. um, but all it takes is just you know one try and uh, if you succeed uh, in the experience, then you're set to keep going. You know, if you fail, well, that either means you don't take those experiences again or try again and do better, you know, mm -hmm. so. That's good advice. Yeah. So since you've been in town, what are some of the projects that you've been really excited about being involved with? And then uh, following up on that, what are some things coming up that you're excited about? Well, a few things that I've been up to. Um, one that I can think of off the top of my head is I recorded on an album with saxophonist Ted Nash from the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Uh, he wrote a suite of big band music, and so he got together some guys to form his big band, some from the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, some from Juilliard, um, and we recorded, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and that is out on Ted's own label, and I'm not going to remember the name of it right now. You can find it if you, you can find Google it. Yeah, yeah. tednash.com. It's called Chakra. And um, 
I finally have my first uh, gig as a leader, a debut gig at a, at a at a club I'm excited about. That is the mm -hmm. Catano. Oh, great! And that'll be um, on June 5th. It's a Thursday night. I'll be leading a quartet, mostly originals. Great. Um, and you know I've done gigs of my own stuff before, but it's never been quite to this like echelon of venue. So I'm excited about that. I feel kind yeah, of affirmed good. as a as a <laughs> as an artist a little bit. Um, other than that, I'm kind of pursuing different, again, different teaching opportunities, trying to get in with um, other spots to find more students and teach like that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's more of a, of a future thing I'm looking for. And a big one is that I'm in the planning process of uh, doing my debut album. Oh, great. Which is something that... Uh, for a variety of reasons, I just haven't been able to do until now, and not everything's been figured out yet, of course. But uh, it's it's about it's it's past time, so I have to do that. Good, so yeah. that people can can look for that in a year from yes. now, right? Yes, <laughs> hopefully. hopefully. So where where can they where can people keep in touch with you if they want to uh, do such things? Uh, well, I am of course on Facebook. Um, I have an artist page on there. And then uh, my website is just www.chrisziemba.com. That is also under reconstruction. I'm going to develop a... It, there's one that exists now, but there's a better one coming out soon. So oh, you can see good. what's going on and the one that happens now. But it'll be better soon. shortly. Soon. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Chris, for hanging out with us today. And we'll see you guys next time on the vlog. Thank you. <laughs>